Queen and welcome to my kitchen and another kitchen quick tip. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are watching me because they are just learning how to cook. So the reason I'm going to do this is because I want them to know how to do this. Uh, we're having some fried pork cutlets for dinner tonight and I needed a breading station to set up. So I thought it might be a good time to take the opportunity to share with you how I set mine up. Now this may seem like a simple thing for all of you folks out there who are seasoned in the kitchen. But for those people who've never done it before or who would like to try it, maybe this is a good place for them to refer to in the future. Uh, breading station is a little setup that's going to help you bread whatever it is you're breading, whether it's chicken strips or chicken nuggets or in this case pork cutlets shrimp. or shrimp or any number of things if you want to do a chicken fried steak or whatever. Um, the rule is wet, dry, dry, wet, dry. Sorry. Because <laughs> you want to you want to dry the surface of whatever you're breading and then you want to dip it and so that the breadcrumbs will stick to it into something wet. So I like to use pie plates because they are deep, you know, somewhat deep, and they're broad. They're wide. They give you not lots of room to work. And a lot of people prefer to do the dipping in a plastic bag, and that's fine, but I don't want to waste a plastic bag on this when I can use it for something else, like, um, you know, saving food in the freezer or whatever. Uh, we go through a lot of plastic bags in my house, don't get me wrong. But um, this is just my, my preferred method. So I have flour in this pie plate. I have a couple of eggs with some buttermilk and a little bit of water in this pie plate. And then I have some breadcrumbs that um, are from a loaf of my homemade bread that I seasoned up and I baked off in the oven just to dry them out a little bit in this pie plate. And that is how you do a breading station. So um, I'll just share with you how you bread something, in this case a pork cutlet. We're going to put that in the flour and get it dried off. Make sure you get all sides. Then you dip it in the egg and let it drip off and then plop it right in there. And what I like to do is nestle that down into the breadcrumb and then just kind of flip the breadcrumb over the top and give it a good press. Hmm? And then I like to flip it over and I like to do it again, even though I know not much is probably going to stick to it. But I like to do that anyway. So, we'll take that out. Get a plate. Now you can just take this out and you can do whatever else. You can do the rest of them. And, um, and just let that sit there. You can do the rest of your meat and then put it on a plate and then you can get ready to fry it off. So, Or you can put it in the oven, put it on a baking sheet and you can bake it off like that. So that is how you set up a breading station in preparation to bread whatever delicious main course that you're preparing for that evening. This is also how you would set up a breading station to do fried zucchini or fried mushrooms or eggplant for eggplant parmesan or any number of other things. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope you try it. I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you liked what you watched today, and I hope that you try it, and I hope that you love it. Um, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram and Google Plus and Blogger. I have a blog over there and you can take a look at that. You can um, subscribe to that feed as well. And don't forget that every recipe that you see me um, do here on YouTube, with the exception of a few earlier ones, you can access all of the recipes over on my website, nareenskitchen.com, where you will find printer-friendly versions of those recipes so you can print them out and keep them for your own. So. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time, happy eating!